Hi everyone, this video is from a presentation I gave recently in a local real estate investors association called the Real Estate Roundtable. We went over all kinds of stuff about real estate, business, and marketing, such as mindset, current market update, how to run a successful short-term rental business, how to become good at sales, starting a local mastermind, and so much more. I spent many, many hours on preparing the presentation so that I could deliver so much value to the audience. It was a really, really good opportunity for everyone who attended to learn more about those subjects so that they could implement the information into their businesses and careers. It was a paid event, but I'm posting this because I wanted to share this valuable information with my viewers as a way of saying thank you. And all I ask in return is you subscribe so that you know when I post more content like this in the future. By the way, make sure you watch all the way to the end as I give away so many more freebies there and you don't want to miss those. I don't want to say that it was shot in a dim location so the lighting wasn't really good, but still there was tons of valuable information there. So. Thank you. Thank you so much everybody for inviting me over to speak to you guys, aspiring group of real estate investors, realtors, and I'm so happy and I'm so grateful to be here with you guys today. So we got a lot to cover. I wanna talk about getting out of your comfort zone. I wanna give you an update on the market. And I want to talk about one of my core businesses, which is short-term rentals. And I wanna talk about artificial intelligence. How does that help my business, my real estate business? I have some random thoughts on social media, having done it for the last two and a half years. You guys need to know that real estate is a sales business. If you don't talk to people, you don't have a business. People and homes are in real estate. There's nothing else that you can talk about in real estate other than peoples and homes. I wanna talk about how to become good at sales. I want to talk about developing good habits. Your sales key performance indicator. I want to talk about your plan system of learning. Last but not least, I want to give you guys lots of freebies. Is that okay with everybody here? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so I was invited to talk by Cole. And the first thing that came to my mind was, what should I be talking about? Who am I that you should be listening to? Like, who is this guy, right? And I can say no, but I wouldn't have spent the time writing the slides for this event. And I wouldn't have written down my random learning thoughts for you, also for my selfish learning and I wouldn't have practiced giving you a presentation on market update before doing it for a bigger crowd on my YouTube channel. And I wouldn't have been dragged out to network with you. Thank you so much, Sergey, for talking with me for an extended period of time during the break. And I wouldn't have been able to teach you a thing or two from my experience in real estate and I wouldn't have been able to tell you how famous I am. <laughs> so, why do you need to get out of your comfort zone? Because, so that you can grow. That is why I do it, and that is why you should do it too. There's a quote by Jerry Rice. He said, today I will do what others won't. So tomorrow, I can do what others can't, all right? So 99% of the population won't do the hard thing to enjoy the 1% of the population get to enjoy. Do you guys believe that? So I challenge you guys 
to do the things that's not comfortable to you so you can actually grow. Talking to people is not comfortable, but it sure is profitable. Do you guys agree with that? Yes. You guys, who's been in real estate for, I don't know, uh, a year plus? Okay. Do you guys agree if you don't talk to people, you don't get that check? That's true. If you don't pick out your phone and talk to prospect, you don't have a business. All right. So I challenge you to challenge yourself. From now on until the end of the year, really just write down things that you've done out of your comfort zone so you can proudly say, I've grown in 2023. Okay, we passed half of the year already. We got six more months to go. Actually, five more months to be exact. So write down something that you think is not comfortable for you, whether it's fitness, whether it's talking to people, whether it's getting that sale, and make sure that you achieve that so you can be proud of yourself at the end of 2023. So why, what does it mean in my world of real estate? What does it mean to be out of the comfort zone? It means doing deals I have never done. It means raising money to buy a 624 unit apartment building for $78 million. It means working on buying a deal in a 55 plus community subject to the existing loan. It means getting in front of the camera and record content in a different way. It means getting back on wholesaling real estate and do it extremely well like what Laura does. It means prospecting like crazy so that I can make lots of money, bull load of money. It means giving a presentation to you guys. That's what it means for me to get out of my comfort zone. It's not comfortable, comfortable for me to stand here. Okay? What does it mean for you? I have listed a few things. It means talk to people to generate sales. It means create a side hustle to have another string of income, whatever that may be for Emily. It may be providing a service for social media and whatnot. It means having a YouTube channel so that you can provide value to people who are thinking about moving to Sacramento, for example. It means doing Instagram reels, right? So that people know you and what you do for your business. It means working out, getting fit, or trying out carnival diet, right. like what my coach does, right? It, may, it means taking a flight for those of you who are afraid of height, like me, like myself. All right, so why you should listen to me? Well, maybe you shouldn't. I just live a few years longer than some of you. Actually, there's many of you here. I'm very glad that you're here. I'm 43 years old. I'm sure that there's some of you who are older, but you have a lot of experience in you. You can actually pass on to the next generation. And I really appreciate Laurel for holding her office hours so that she can impart value to a lot of wannabe investors and bird dogs. I had a PhD in computer science and it has nothing, nothing to do with what I'm doing now, which is real estate. 180 degree, completely different from what I'm doing now. I was a very good programmer, software engineer, but I wasn't good at sales. But right now I'm getting better at it. So PhD, uh, it helps with authority. Maybe, that's a maybe. I feel, this is my opinion, that school is overrated. The best school is the school of hard knocks where you learn practical life experiences to help you survive, exceed, and become better at your own pace. It doesn't matter if it's four years or it doesn't matter if it's six years. It can be forever. It is okay, but you want to keep on learning because it is a lifetime of learning, okay, in the school of hard knocks. I've done virtual wholesaling for the first three years of working for myself that I've concluded 
that is not worth my time because the assignment fee is so little once you split with your boots on the ground. That's why I retreated. That's why I'm doing it here. I started local wholesaling before I move on to doing fix and flip and short-term rental and many other things. I have 30 other state rentals to learn that you have to go very, very big to get that meaningful cash flow or the turnover can eat up your cash flow and maybe it's not really worth it if you don't have the money and time set aside to see it through, okay? That was my learning lesson and I hope that you guys learn it as well. There's pros and there's cons with investing out of state. And you can ask me more about that later. I flip enough houses, of course not as much as Laurel, but I can tell you that it is a business in and by itself. So make sure that you have some systems and processes in place. I've done five plus creative financing deals to tell you that it's not all rainbow and sunshine that people say is buying nothing down. It is out there, but do you really want it? Skin in the game is real. When you have that conversation with somebody and then you offer, can you do creative financing? They're gonna ask you, what is your skin in the game? How much are you gonna pay me? Okay, be ready to have an answer for that. I've raised money for multifamily, general partner, limited partner for 2,275 doors to tell you it's really a game of working as a team, leveraging someone else's expertise to increase your net worth. You can't do this alone, especially in multifamily syndication. Everybody has their strengths. Everybody has their weaknesses. When you combine everybody's strengths together, you have a dream team. I've owned 20 plus short-term rentals here in SAC, enough to tell you that I really, really enjoy hospitality and providing great quality of service in exchange for lots of money. <laughs> and the proof is in the protein slide, which I'll show you later, okay? I have five senior care facilities, okay, throughout the whole Sacramento County uh, this is for higher cash flow, but I come to realize that I'm not the best at doing this. And it's better to bring a partner and give that partner equity than doing it, than doing something that I'm not good at and driving myself crazy. <laughs> All right. Sometimes you need to bring a partner and give equity and just have that run as a business in and by itself. I am a rising influencer. That's what I say about me being famous with 267 followers on Facebook, 22,000 on LinkedIn, 12,000 on Instagram. To tell you that if you want to make money from social media, it is a long term game. I've been doing it for two plus years. Maybe I haven't done it right like what Emily did, but I, I pick up a thing or two from her. So we're going to go back and implement that. However, you get lots, lots of fringe benefits, such as credibility, vanity, engagement, likes, views, and so forth. And more on this later. So here are some like payouts that I get from my guests. Here is $3,500. That's for 32 nights. And you can see it's $100, $110 a night for 32 nights. That, that is a payout of $234 per night for 18 nights. And that is almost 30 grand. That's 30 grand for uh, 50, uh, 111 nights. 111 nights. That's 64 nights for $13,000. There's another one that's $29,000 for six months. Okay. <laughs> this is all in Sacramento. Let's shift gear. And I'm gonna talk to you about update on the market. This I pulled from the MLS, and this is strictly in Sacramento County. Homes for sale in June 2023. So MLS data is one month behind. We're in the month of July. This is the data in the month of June. 
there's 1,029 units, and that's up 18.4% compared to last month. So you can see that uh, there's definitely people are putting their properties on the market for sale because we're coming into the summer. Homes closed in June, 902 units. That's down 14.4% compared to last month. And it's down 31, almost, almost one third compared to last year. Just this number can tell you that we don't have enough inventory. If you think that last year's inventory is low, this year is more than half less of the inventory as of last year. So for you guys who are suffering because you can't get a hold of a deal, it's not a problem of you. It's actually the, the problem of the market, the, the, uh, the, the microeconomics that we're in. Okay, and homes place, uh, homes, homes closed in June 2000 down 14.4% and down 31.6% compared to last year. So uh, what that means is that uh, there's just even lower buyer action. In June 2023, 19 days on market, if you put the property on the market for sale, you're gonna be, you're gonna sell that property in 19 days. And that's down 27% compared to last month. Okay, so now is the time to sell. You're basically getting 20% uh, shorter time to sell now than in May. But it's up 26.7% compared to last year. So it's still taking a little bit longer than last year to sell. Anything that you put on the market last year, it's gone, maybe the next day or the next hour, right? It's not like that now, but it's still very good. Sold over original list price percentage in June 2023, it's 100%. And that's 0% compared to last month, 0% compared to last year. What that means is that these homes are actually priced very right. The realtors are smart. The sellers, they have come to the realization they have to price right in order for their homes to sell, all right? However, we're still at longer days for days on market compared to last year. Days on market decreased by 25% compared to last month. So that is a good sign. So if you're holding any properties that you wanna sell, now is the time because with real estate, there's seasonality. Right, and we're actually in a high season, popular season. Usually that's summer. A lot of people are out of school, family, they just uh, visiting homes, thinking about the ne next house to buy. Last but not least on uh, the market update is uh, the average for sale price down 2.4% compared to last month, up 19% compared to last year. I don't really look at that data because it doesn't tell me as much as average sold price, which is up 1.5% compared to last month, but it's down 0.5% compared to last year. So what this tells me is price appears to be flat. There's not really a recession as it appears to be considering how high the interest rate is rising right now. Okay, well, there's only 0.5% drop, okay, in average sold price in June compared to last year. Okay, so your real estate is holding a lot of value right now. Last slide is months of inventory. Uh, that's uh, that's 1.1 month. Anything that's less than three is seller's market. Three to six is neutral market. If it's over six, it's buyer's market and that's up 36.4% compared to last month. Okay, so that means there's more inventory by 36.4% than last month, but it's down 38.7% compared to last year. So we're still suffering this low inventory condition right now. So there's more homes for sale, however, still low inventory. All right, so this is Kevin's opinion on the market and depending on what you are in the marketplace, if you're a buyer, my recommendation or my suggestion is for you to wait. 
because you don't get as much of a discount as in the last month. Last month I did a market update, it's about 6%. In a previous slide, it's about 3% this month. So it's better for you to wait to get that deal, sweet deal, when fall comes around. If you're a seller, now is your time to sell. You're not getting as much of a squeeze in price as before, and there's actually shorter days on market, 25% shorter to be exact. And that low inventory plays into your favor. And it is still the seller's market. If you're an investor like me, you want to bait that 3% into your after repair value, three additional percent, and you want to look more carefully for a good deal because there's going to be a lot of our price deal out there, okay? And you want to look for deals that have discount, probably deeper discount than ever. And you want to sell when you can because now is the time, okay? Now I want to shift gear to talk about short-term rentals. And I get asked a lot from people about this question is, why do people come to Sacramento? Do you guys have any guess other than what I listed there? River. Okay, America, America River, what? Price. Price, okay. Aftershock. Aftershock. <laughs> I didn't know about Aftershock until I get that from my guests. And you know, I asked them like usually before they booking is what is your purpose of coming to Sacramento? And I get a whole bunch of booking the first year in that October time frame, They told me that there's this event called Aftershock. For those of you who are into rock and roll, that is one of the best events out there in, in, the, in, in the nation. In the nation, and it happens to be in Sacramento. So there's, not, there's something that you can be proud of. We're basically charging like $300 a night. And you can get, you can get like a whole week of like $300 because all the hotels were booked. So now they go to short-term rentals and book with operators like us, okay? So these are the reasons and they surprised me until I started doing this business. People come here for anniversary. People come here for graduation. People come here to visit family. People come here because they're into construction and they're here for a project. People come here because they're displaced by natural disaster. People come here for like marathon, wherever, tennis, tournament, CrossFit, sports uh, related, competition, event. Yeah, even like Aftershock. This is like, I just, you know, come to find out after doing this for so many years. People come to our short term rentals for party, all right? You have like people say, hey, it's just a couple, right? just the two of us here to still have bring an anniversary. Our camera shows it's a <laughs> bunch of people. I had to go like in the past to one of my properties because I saw it on camera, 20 people coming into the house. And I had to like call the police to you know, get them out of the place. Because you want to keep in good terms with your neighbors. If your neighbors complain, you're screwed, okay? People come here to do drugs, okay? There's drug dealings in our, in our short-term rentals. And sorry to say, so a tool that I use to run a success, successful short-term rental business, these are just a list of a few that came to my mind. We use Hospitable that automates messages sent to guests. And there's a lot of messages that we send to a guest pre-checking message, three day before message, checking instruction, one day after, how is it going? Do you need anything? Can we bring you anything? Do you miss anything? How do we make your st stay even better? Check out message to ask them for a good review. And then we do a follow up message just to get them to book with us again in the future. So how many messages are there? Can you count? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's at least six messages per guest. And just look at how many reviews I have. 1,780 reviews. You just multiply six by that number, that's the amount of messages that I have to send if I don't have automation. 
but this is done by Hospitable. Hospitable allows me to sync uh, my, my uh, calendar across multiple platforms. There's Airbnb, there's Booking.com, and there's Verbal. When someone book with you on Verbal, you want to make sure that those days are blocked on Airbnb and Booking.com. So you don't get into a double booking situation where two sets of parties come to the same property and they say, I have a booking on this day. It did happen to us before. It was a headache. You don't want to deal with that. And you want Hospitable to help you to make sure that you block those days that's booked on a different platform. Hopefully, we use that as a virtual guide so that they have to, in order for them to get check-in instruction, such as keyless code and Wi-Fi, they have to give us their email so that we can market for their business in the future. And this really helps us uh, in the low season where there's not many operators that get bookings, but we do because we actually reach out to them proactively for marketing. Price Labs, we use Price Labs for dynamic pricing to really optimize revenues, okay? Now, the price tonight is different from the night where Aftershock ha is, is happening, okay? I can charge three times more when Aftershock happens than now, and usually price is way more, way higher uh, many days down the road than now. It's almost like a uh, price line, okay? The closer that you get to the day that you're traveling, it gets more expensive. But when just maybe 10 minutes before you hop on, there's tickets they want to just sell. They're just discounted like, uh, it's, it's like, it's called last minute. They just discount it so that hopefully they can get some people to book and sell those seats that way. We use owner rest. That is our direct booking platform so that we can save, save guests on, on the third party fees. Do you not know that Airbnb charge you guests 10%? Okay, this is in addition to the nightly that you pay. So you pay $100 per night, you actually pay $110. That 10% goes to Airbnb. So we save guests that 10% by asking them to book with us direct and uh, we just charge them 3% just to pay for uh, software and whatnot. We use this uh, lock, it's called Eufy, keyless lock. We don't use locks with keys anymore because we used to lose them. It's $75, but you have to duplicate it and your cleaner has to bring it to the property to guess it's a pain in the ass, especially when you're running a big operation of 20 plus properties. It's a pain in the ass. Don't do it. Uh, how many of you have ring cameras? Do you have ring cameras at your home? Okay, that's important. So we have a front and back ring cameras that is to make sure that we don't have parties take place. Like what I just talked to you guys about, if it's a couple, make sure it's actually a couple. It's not a couple plus 20 plus people that's come through your property, all right? My new sensors, it's a noise aware and smoke sensor. Okay, they recently, this is like in uh, their second generation now device. Uh, they actually, we have a lot of people that come, come through and they smoke marijuana in our properties. And it takes a long, long time to get that smell out of the, out of the properties. And we can send that as a claim to Airbnb and we charge guests $250 for smoking in our properties. Amazon list for furnishing. So uh, you want to take a picture of that. This is, this is a list of towels, pillows, sheets, linens, everything, sofa, um, wherever that you need is in that list. And that is the SOP list that we go by every time we start up uh, a, a, a short-term rental. There's additional income that you can make off of your short-term rental. You can charge people for early check-in. Our standard check-in is 5 p.m. If they want to check in at three, we charge them $75. Late checkout, our standard checkout is 11 a.m. If they want to check out at 1 p.m., we charge them $75. Extra cleaning, if you're there for 
30 days and you want to do a midterm cleaning, we'll do that for you, but we're going to charge you for it. Uh, we started to bring in a car rental. Uh, you can actually rent one of our cars when you're in town and we have a link to Turo. So you can actually book our car over there on the Turo platform. How many of you have actually used Turo? It's a great platform, right? Amazing. Every time I go to Vegas, I always uh, you know, use Turo. Bypass the line and then they drop off the car at the airport for you. Selling art pieces. So that, that cactus picture on the wall, uh, my, my manager, he's an artist. So he, he sells his piece work, art piece, actually in my Airbnbs, okay? It's a symbiotic relationship, okay? He gets to make a, you know, a few bucks on his, actually those are pretty expensive. <laughs> How many of you actually have, you heard, have heard of Swimply? You can actually, if you have a pool, you can actually rent out your pool to, to people for like a couple hours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Peer Space, uh, that's uh, another platform that we use uh, just to rent out our Airbnb to as an event ven venue for a couple hours and you can get that nightly rate and even more just for that couple of hours. So some people, they would do social media. We do a lot of content creation, our different Airbnbs. Uh, there's like up and coming, rising uh, uh, influencers. Uh, they just want to have a different environment. They would book uh, uh, one of our properties on Peer Space. So how do you make yourself stand out? Because in this business, I think everybody has heard of Airbnb, is probably tired of hearing that, and now it's becoming a catchphrase for doing, uh, long, for doing rentals. But you want to make sure that you stand out by theming, theming your property, okay? Make sure that it's different and so you can differentiate from all the other listings out there. So you want to provide vibrant color, you want to provide contrast, Look at this green couch. You want to make sure that you have bright lighting. You want to have contrast. You want to have neutral color. And you want to have, don't get those furniture from Craigslist. Well, you guys, get it from Wayfair. Just buy brand new, okay? Just so that they, they actually match. Uh, and you want to make sure that you clean it well. You don't want to go to a hotel and find out like there's a piece of hair on the toilet or there's another piece of hair on the bed and uh, there's like dust everywhere when you just take off your shoes and you get like all your, uh, your feet, you know, all black, right? You don't want that to happen to you because the next thing uh, you're going to get is from your guests, I want a refund. So you, use, you actually lose that night, or you forfeit that, that stay, because you have to give that refund back to your guests to stay at a high you know, review rating. Uh, maintain it well, because wear and tear do happen, and you really need a reliable handyman, all right? Especially when you scale, you want to make sure that this handyman is there full time. Wherever there's a problem with plumbing, wherever there's a problem with electricity, that, that person can go there like in the next few hours. We're not talking about days. We're not doing long-term rental. We're, we're providing hospitality with great quality of service, okay? Providing exceptional service. If there's an AC problem, especially right now because we're in summer, most of my homes, the AC units are kind of old, so they need servicing. Sometimes they, they're short on Freon, so we will make sure that we service those units um, at the next, very next instant when, when there's, no, there's no air, there's no cold air. Um, hair dryer is very important, especially for female guests. They need that hair dryer, very important. Can open it or for people who are celebrating anniversary, full size mirror. I didn't know this. Okay, until my girlfriend told me, hey, babe, how come you don't have a full-size mirror uh, like in any of the, the space in the home? Full-size mirror so you can look at yourself as you are preparing yourself for that conference or presentation in that short-term rental that you're staying in. Uh, makeup towels, very important. Okay, we have black makeup towels 
for female guests. And uh, communication, you want to stay on top of communication. It's better to say something, sorry, I don't provide that, than not saying anything at all, okay? Otherwise, people are going to write a review. That's one of the metrics that you're, you're rated on, on Airbnb, is your communication. You're going to get that five out of five com on communication. So say something, sorry, I don't provide it. Sorry, I don't have a hair dryer. Sorry, I don't have it at, right at this instant, but I can go get it for you and then drop it off in front of the door for you, okay? Because you're operating almost like a hotel hospitality business. So what are the gotchas? Well, people do trash your place, okay? We have people that have lots of trash. I have to tell my uh, gardener to come and haul away those trash, okay? That's right in front of the house. That's out on the street. My neighbor actually called me and said, hey, uh, your, your property is being trashed by the guests. Uh, you have broken chair and people that le left their rotten food in the fridge, okay? And look at that bags of trash, like in front of the house. And you have stained sheets, stained sheets. And then he asked them not to have dogs. They, they come with their dogs, okay, with their pets. So they have no respect of your rules and you have to enforce it or you have to charge them uh, so that you can actually uh, get that money back, all right? So getting a claim approved can be difficult with Airbnb, okay? Uh, I don't do it, my assistant does it, and it's a pain in the ass to deal with Airbnb. They just try to weasel out any claim they can possibly uh, weasel out. So you have to be on top of it. And sometimes they come back with a different number. It's either that you accept their number, or you can fight with them and you get nothing. So it's better for you to get maybe $250 than getting nothing, right? Because if you want 500, you get 250, it's okay to just walk away with that than just dragging on with Airbnb for such a long period of time. People will make excuses to get out of a contract. I have one guest that stayed with us uh, for 30 plus days, okay? I got a call from my manager. He said that, hey, uh, the guest said the house was haunted. Okay, there's paranormal activities. Therefore, we're getting out. That's after two weeks, after they're, they're in the property for two weeks. Okay, I'm like, what the hell? This has never ever happened to me. Well, actually once, one flip that we did. Super scary, by the way. We have bookings, bookings after bookings after that particular one. So I know that house is not haunted. It's just haunted for them. All right. Uh, I didn't know that you guys have cameras. Okay, we make sure before they, after they book with us, we send a message, message to them to tell them that, by the way, we have cameras in the front and in the back of the house. So don't have any idea of throwing a party at my house. So people will say, hey, I want to cancel my booking with you because, I mean, it's not a, it's not a house for, for a party. Too bad you book with us and you're going to forfeit that, okay? Uh, but... Some people, they'll, they'll still get out of that contract. Uh, you want to account for ongoing expenses for ancillary services, such as internet, you're paying for that, landscaping, pool cleaning, if you have a pool, utilities, cleaning supplies, bedding, sheets, towels, linens, etc. Okay, you're operating a hospitality business. Okay, these are fees that if you operate a long-term rental, your tenant is paying for these, right? But now it's a short-term rental. You're actually taking these costs yourself. I'm going to shift gear again. Right now I'm going to talk about AI. How does AI help my real estate business? And I, I wrote down some prompts here. And I hope this will be helpful to you because it's very, very helpful to me. Okay? So... But this is what I gave to ChatGPT. How many of you know ChatGPT? Artificial intelligence. It's the greatest creation out there. Right now, I think it's the next big thing. All right? Write me an article with those keywords in it for our website. And that's the prompt that you use. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go over that. But uh, Comb can uh, share the slides with you guys. Paraphrase and elaborate on 
existing content on our website so that they are SEO friendly. Okay, you want, you want your website to be SEO friendly, like sell my house fast. That's a very good keyword. You should rank on that and Laura ranks very high on that keyword. Yeah. So you wanna paraphrase and expand on your existing content. Okay, so that Google knows that your content is not stale, is up to date, and you can actually ask ChatGPT to help you with that. Write me a short term rental slash sale listing description. Super helpful, super time saving for me. Write me a short term rental description for a fully remodeled house that's conveniently located near restaurants, shops, parks. Emphasize the brand new open concept kitchen, plenty of bed counts for a large party, a work from home office. You want to highlight the the amenities that you're offering in the home and ChatGPT will write that copywriting for you. Just so perfect. You basically shrink that copywriting time from anywhere from four to six hours to like one minute. That's machine learning. Write me a letter of recommendation for someone. I was asked to write a letter of recommendation for my property manager. Uh, he manages my group homes. Uh, he uh, came from uh, alcohol, uh, addiction recovery. Um, so that's that. Write me a statement of authority for my employee to the sheriff's office for obtaining a police report. So when uh, you file like a claim, Airbnb claim, they usually ask you for a police report. Okay. So I basically outsource, outsource that. But in order for me to transfer that authority, they need that little of explanation. And it asks ChatGPT, I don't ask Google anymore. Answer questions about freezing AC evaporator coil. I have my AC guy that tells me about the, uh, the, the evaporator coil that just froze up, right? I'm like, what the f is, is that all about? So I asked ChatGPT about that. Forex tra trading hours, I'm into trading, intraday trading. It's 24 hours for five days of the week. Yeah. There's actually three sessions and you want to make sure that you, you get on the sessions where there's a lot of traffic. Just for those of you who are into trading. Benefits of walking. I, I started walk, uh, walking like after, I, after my dinner and I'm losing my belly here, belly fat. It, it's, it's helping me a lot. Uh, preparation topics for preparing a nursing exam. My, my girlfriend, uh, she's trying to get to the States and she's preparing the exam here. So I, I would challenge you, I would ask you to consider it. Consider using ChatGPT in your business. All right, so here is my random thoughts on social media. And Emily, you can disagree with me. It's just my opinion, but different perspectives. So they're all welcome. I say social media is rarely a predictable business model for obtaining business. It's not a predictable model. However, prospecting is, and it's productive, okay? Money is in prospecting, and prospecting is productive. There's a myth here that social media has no cost, and that is a lie. How much do you, do you think uh, you're worth uh, on an hourly basis? $50 maybe, $50 an hour. Multiply the hours that you spend on creating content. That's the cost of creating that piece of content there for you, okay? So it's, it's a lie that social media has no cost. Social media is a distraction. and It's not really a true source of income, at least for me, okay? Gen Z. You can uh, disagree with me. Otherwise, uh, professional people do have a high degree of professional skills. So are you spending your time creating content or you're spending your time on developing professional skills of buying and selling real estate? So you guys are in real estate. You should be spending your time sharpening your skills, sales skills on getting sell, uh, 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 buying that piece of real estate or selling that piece of real estate. So when you come to the seller's uh, house, you want to have a perfect listing presentation, whether you are a buyer, principal yourself, or a listing agent. 
Last but not least, if you want to do social media, hire a pro like Ryan. He's a pro, professional, and make sure that you track the KPIs, such as views, engagement, like likes, and the return on your investment, right? You're going to spend that money. What is the return on that money invested in social media? I'm going to give you some statistics on listing. 10% of the Asians, listen to this carefully, in California, in the whole United States, in Northern America, for that matter, control 90% of the listings. Isn't that shocking? 10% controls 90% of the listings. And 50% of the Asians of the 90% will not do a sale. I don't know why you're getting your license for. If you don't sell, you don't call yourself a pro. You cannot do this full time. So make sure that you spend the right intention in this business so you can get not only one sale, two, three, four. 90% of the Asian that are doing deals of the 90% are actually doing four or less deals. And that's co considered highly productive, okay? Four deals. What, how much is your commission check? 10,000, 15,000? So multiply that by four. Your, your yearly salary is 60 grand. You can't you can live off of $60,000, right? As a real estate agent. Therefore, a lot of realtors, they're doing side hustles. Maybe the barista at a, at a Starbucks and whatnot, right? So if you really take this seriously as a business, you got a prospect like crazy. Okay, uh, Dante just made like a sweet deal from me and he's going to ma make another sweet deal. He's going to be making way more and so is Laurel. There are a lot of realtors here, so also consider wholesaling, okay? Is it pathetic? Yes. And we're, we're really in a sales business full of non-sales people. That is why a lot of people come to this business not having real estate or sales experience. Like I came to this industry without any sales experience. I was a nerd, computer nerd. I had to train myself to be a salesperson. And training to be a salesperson is a long-term journey, all right? Like I said, real estate is a business of talking to people. If you don't talk to people, you don't make any money. Without people in homes, there's nothing. There's nothing to talk about. Prospecting, lead generation, and being a listing agent is how you stay in the game. And if you want to stay in this game for the long term, make sure you do those three, okay? And get into a direct conversation versus buying leads, such as direct mail, pay-per-click, social media, etc. You prospect to get a deal. You don't really wait for it to drop on your lap. That's just my opinion. And if, you, if I really want long-term customer for life, I have to keep communication foremost in my mind. Communication is critical. You lose if you don't communicate. And you want to outsource admin tasks so you can focus on the mining generating activity, which for me is prospecting. Delete, delegate, automate tasks that's not relevant to that activity, all right? Selling is legal. You don't get put into jail by selling 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 properties. There's no way. So go sell a lot of properties, please. You realtors out there, okay? You're actually supporting the U.S. economy, okay? The inventory, it's low because you're not doing your work, guys. <laughs> you're going to go and make the sales so we can have that inventory in the marketplace. Do you want to deal with a cheerful and positive buyer, right? A principal? or a gloomy or negative one. Enthusiasm and energy, that is something that draws people to you, okay? Whether you are a wholesaler, cash buyer, or listing agent. Um, improve your contact ratio. Never take rejections personally because from people that you don't know, all right? And if it's okay for them to fire you, it's also okay for you to fire them, right? 
uh, you work with people that you want to work with. You have a choice. You have a choice. And there are more nuts than squirrels to eat them. So then get, don't get attached to the leaves, okay? And make sure that your leaf follower is well defined and technology can help you fill the cracks. I want to talk about mindset for a little bit. Is um, whatever market condition that we're in, it really has no effect on your production. You control your own state of affairs and your own economy. Okay, I want you to insulate yourself from what is going on outside of yourself, okay, in the world. Uh, discipline will take you to places, but motivation will not. Okay, I work out at seven every day, no matter how badly motivated I am, because I'm just disciplined. Okay, doesn't matter if I have the extra motivation or not. And actually, uh, a peer will, will, will help. So accountability partner actually matters a lot. Um, so we don't grow when things are easy, we grow when things are difficult. And uh, you gotta ask yourself what you want. What do you want? Michael, what do you want, right? And what does it take for you to get there? For me, I want $30,000 per month of income and I'm, I'm going to prospect to get it. What about you? So train yourself to fill the blank, even if you don't feel like it. Train yourself to talk to people, to prospect, to go to the gym, to, to get on this diet, even if you don't feel like it. The hardest part of succeeding at the high level is to stick to your schedule every day. Oh, and then start every day with zero, okay, as your production grows so that you always, always psych, your, psych yourself, hack yourself into thinking that uh, my back is against the wall and I don't have money in the bank and I gotta go and make some money, all right? Accountability partner, and you wanna model after successful people, okay? Think like them, talk like them, do what they do so that you can have what they have. Consider interviewing someone that's more productive as successful than you are, like Laurel. She's very successful. She's the authority in the market. She's way more successful. I still remember the first time we talked at your house, right? You had that little mastermind going on just to get people started wholesaling, you know, bird dogging for you. So that, that, that's giving back, right? That's adding value. Um, and also consider being interviewed by somebody as well. You really have something to offer Right, you have something that other people don't. So check your ego, don't think that you're, you're too great to give an interview and whatnot. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable, okay? Like, you know, coming to the stage and give a talk like this. Uh, track your KPIs. For me, I track the number, number of hours I talk to people, the number of contacts that I make daily, the leads that I follow up in my CRM, and the appointments that I make during the week, all right? You gotta establish some kind of minimum standard on what you'll, you'll do on a daily basis with the purpose of generating a sale. So your, your time, 70% of it, should be spent on production-based activities and 30% on admins. So this is my schedule. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., I call, call, I prospect. I don't depend on anyone to give me a lead. I do it myself, okay? Even during this time, when I don't have people to call call with me, I do it myself. Prospecting from 1 to 2.30, lead follow-up from 2.30 to 4 p.m., I have appointment. And if no appointment, I go back to doing lead follow-up. Just like calling people in my database and see if they want to sell right now, okay? Uh, you want to overcome repetitious boredom and you want to become infatuated with your daily productive activities, all right? This is coming from somebody that I interviewed uh, last week. He's 24 years old. He's been in real estate for four years. He's a listing agent, a sales agent. Um, he's on track to do 40 deals, transactions this year, netting $400,000 in his pocket, and he's only 24 years old. This is coming from his mouth, overcoming repetitious boredom. Okay, that is become infatuated with your daily productive activities, which is prospecting.
okay? You want to make sure that you have a system of learning, okay? I don't know about, I know, I know about Michael's system of learning. He would just put on his headset and uh, listen to a podcast or interview as he was like doing uh, his cardio on the Stairmaster for an hour every, every day. Just imagine you're getting fit and you're also enriching your brain at the same time. That's crazy, right? So I do 15 minutes uh, a day of uh, just reading. I have Audible that's uh, playing to me. So I make sure that I, I'm focused. I don't get distracted. Uh, you want to learn something, pick something to learn this year in 2023. I want to learn how to read faster. I want to learn how to speak Spanish. I want to do handstand walk. Um, and you want to do it without distraction. There's such a, there's a thing called Pomodoro technique. All right. I did a TikTok video and that's a link to it. It tells you how to do that. Watch YouTube or listen to a podcast interview from a thought leader. Attend a meetup like this one. Join a mastermind, investor fuel, uh, Avengers, mindset master. Uh, I'm part of like five masterminds or hire a coach just to like fast track your, um, your journey to success. All right, so this is the last slide is uh, some freebies for you. I have two YouTube videos here. One is on everything you need to know about starting, about start, about flipping houses. You wanna flip houses? This count teaches you how. Number two is top four most profitable renovations in 2023. Number three is the article that I collaborated with ChatGPT for SEO on our website. How do you buy a home in California with ease? 13 easy steps to become a home owner. And you want to sign up for our newsletter uh, that has lots of content on real estate market, market update, investing opportunities, case studies, and you want to scan that QR code, all right? And uh, I do have a meetup, monthly meetup, where I invite uh, different uh, speakers that come on to speak on different topics of real estate. Usually we hold that in different, uh, different uh, uh, houses. They're, in there. they're either our flips or our Airbnbs. Uh, so you can check that out. That's our uh, Facebook page. And you can follow me here. This is Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. Here, I'm, I'm everywhere on social media. I think that's it. Uh, I was going to do more, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to stop here because I was going to teach you guys how to like pull a list of cash buyers. Uh, but, but uh, well, I can just record a TikTok video on it, a reel. Or, or I can come back just to do some tactical like hands-on hands uh, stuff for you guys. Yeah, that's it. All right.